Hello and welcome to the complete guide on how to change the rear brake rotor or disc on your YFZ450. This same procedure applies to all years starting in 04 right up to 2021. The rear brake assembly doesn't really change so this video can be used uh, whichever year you have. I'm going to go over the different tools that you need, how to tell if your rotor actually needs to be replaced and then I will show you how to replace it. Let's get started. Alrighty, let's go over all the tools that you're gonna need. I have a half inch DeWalt impact, which is optional. It's just to take off the wheel nuts. Uh, you don't actually need it. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier. I have a torque wrench, a dead blow hammer, a wire brush, a flathead screwdriver, I would say medium size. I have a 15 16 impact socket, a 14 mil impact socket, a regular 14 mil socket, a six millimeter Allen, a half inch extension, a half inch ratchet, a 14 mil wrench, which I don't actually need. I just have it just in case. A small or medium pair of pliers. And then for goop, I have WD-40, medium strength thread locker, and then you don't need this, but it's good preventative maintenance. I have some copper anti-seize. How to tell if your rotor needs to be replaced. It is very uncommon that a rotor will actually wear out. You would probably need to replace your pads three times before your rotor needed to be replaced. A rotor only needs to be changed when it is damaged or warped. On the right I have my new OEM Yamaha rotor, straight like an arrow. On the left. I have my used one that is bowed out and doesn't sit flat on the table. It rocks back and forth. Um, how to tell if your rotor is damaged? Now mine, I know that I hit a rock with it and it has a small flat spot on the bottom. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right here. You probably won't be able to see it on camera, but it's a little bit wider right here where it got smushed and that has bent it. And the way I could tell, not just from visual inspection, but when you're driving and you hit your rear brake, uh, you will feel a pulsing. Um, the quad won't slow down smoothly. It will be in like jerky motions. It will slow down and then normal, slow down normal, slow down normal, but this is all happening very quickly. And that's how you know that your rotor is damaged or warped. I'm going to start by removing the wheel. I've just jacked up the quad and I have a large block of wood underneath just in case it falls off the jack. So I've got my half inch to wall impact and we're going to take off the four 14 millimeter nuts to remove the wheel. Next, we're going to remove the two 14 millimeter bolts that hold on the caliper bracket. And they are located here, that's one. And the second one is up here by the cables, right there, that's the second one. And with those out, we can go ahead and remove the rear caliper assembly. Now you want to be careful of your parking brake cable and especially your rear brake line. You don't want to stretch them or anything because it could cause the lines to crack. So we're just going to gently wiggle this off. And just place it to the side like that with minimal tension on those lines. Now we can remove the four 6 mil Allen bolts holding on the brake rotor. Now because this is the original rotor and this has probably never been off before, I'm just going to put on a little bit of penetrating fluid on each of the four bolts. And I've also put the ATV in second gear to help hold the axle steady while I undo them. Now with Allen bolts, you always want to make sure that your socket is completely seated so you don't risk stripping it out. So it's always a good idea when you're getting it in there the first time, 
wiggle it around a bit to make sure that it's completely seated in the bottom of the bowl. And then they will come out nice and easy, just like this. Now we're going to remove the wheel hub assembly. So I pulled out the cotter pin and I have a 15 16 impact socket. I'm gonna put that on my DeWalt impact and take it off. Just like that. Now the tricky part, which is removing the rear wheel hub. I've gone ahead and sprayed it with some WD-40 and now I'm going to use a dead blow hammer, which is a soft rubber hammer filled with sand. So it has similar effectiveness to a regular sledgehammer, but it won't split and break your parts. So now I'm just going to go around. I know these tears come with pain. Even so, and just the same. Make it rain. Okay, now it's time to install the rotor. Keep in mind there is a front and a back. On the front, uh, the bolt holes are slightly recessed so that your bolts sit more flush. The back, which is going against the carrier, is completely flat. There are no uh, little cutouts. So we'll put that on this way, like so. And we're going to install our four six mil hex bolts with a little bit of medium strength thread locker. Just gonna get those all finger tight to begin with. And now we're just gonna use a half inch ratchet just to snug these up and make sure that you do each one a little bit at a time, otherwise they can actually bind. So just go around, do them all, a couple of turns, and move to another one. Okay, and now that we have these snugged up, we're going to torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Again, I have the quad in gear so that it stays still. Okay, now that our rotor is all torqued, I'm going to grab a wire brush and clean off line so that our hub assembly goes on easier. Okay, and now I'm also going to grab a rag and clean out some of the dirt from inside of this hub. Okay, with that cleaned out, I'm gonna grab just a little bit of copper anti-seize and put some inside of the hub, just on the spline, just a little bit, not much. And then just a touch on the actual axle. Like so. And then, line this up, slide it on and then just give it a little tap to make sure that it is completely seated against the actual axle shaft. Now we're gonna grab the axle nut and washer, don't forget the washer, and we're going to torque this to 75 foot-pounds, which is quite a lot. So we have our 15 16 socket, I'm going to start tightening it up. Okay. 
and that is 75. And now you're gonna grab a fresh cotter pin and put that through and bend it over. You don't need Loctite because you're using a cotter pin. Okay, so we're just going to slip that in and then bend the ends around the castle nut. Like so. Now it's time to reinstall the caliper. So what you're gonna do is take your flathead screwdriver, insert it between your brake pads, and just give a little bit of twisting motion to separate the pads a little bit. That should give you enough room to slide the caliper onto the rotor. And then you're gonna put a little bit of medium strength thread locker onto your two 14 mil bolts and install them into the bracket. But these are snug. I'm going to grab my torque wrench. Now I'm gonna to torque these to 30 foot-pounds. Thirty and thirty. And the final step is to reinstall your wheel. Like so. And then put on the four fourteen millimeter nuts. And these I'm not going to torque, I'm just going to tighten them with a half inch 14 mil ratchet. And with the quad now out of gear, we can test out our work. Spins freely, and then when we hit the brake, it stops. Congratulations, you have successfully replaced the rear brake rotor in your 04 to 2021 YFZ 450. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, please leave them down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. Videos that I have coming in the future are a parking brake um, delete kit from Alba Racing. I'm going to be installing a FMF slip-on exhaust. I'm also considering doing a performance clutch installation. But if there are any other maintenance videos or upgrade videos that you guys want to see, let me know and I will try to make them happen. Also, if you guys want to follow my Instagram, I will leave it down in the description and up on the screen. I've got a lot of cool pictures of quad stuff, uh, car projects, and if you guys want to see videos of anything that I have on my Instagram, just let me know and I will try to make it happen.